where three women were killed in a triple shooting. This is over in Manatee County, not far from the Tampa St. Petersburg area. And those killed include the mother and cousin of the man deputies believe pulled the trigger. This all happening overnight and the Manatee County Sheriff is joining now to give an update. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, bef before I get started, just wanted to say that uh, our thoughts and our prayers go out to the families uh, of the victims of this tragic event. Uh, we, we pray that, uh, uh, that God watches over them during this very, very tragic time. Just want to try to give you a timeline of the events that took place last night. And before I get started, I really want to show you the killer himself, the one that is responsible for three homicides in Manatee County last night. His name is Javante Bryce. He is 28 years of age. He is the one that went on a killing spree last night in Manatee County. So we, we believe initially that this all, all started sometime before 9 o'clock when Mr. Bryce traveled to the Palmetto Trace apartments in Palmetto, in the city of Palmetto. Inside one of those apartments was his sister and a mother of one of the many children that Mr. Bryce has. When he walked into the apartment, he looked at the ex-girlfriend and said, I have to kill you. Somehow, the sister was able to talk him down and talk him out of him shooting this ex-girlfriend. Uh, she later told investigators that he was acting very strange, not really sure what was going on with him. At 9.17 p.m., we know that he traveled to the Motel 6 uh, in East Bradenton. Inside one of those rooms was his mother, his mother's boyfriend, and two young juvenile sisters. He walked into that hotel room, looked at the mother and said, I'm sorry. She asked, what did you do? And he shoots her three times in front of the boyfriend, and these two innocent young juveniles. He then travels into Palmetto to the 900 block of 26th Street East. One of his cousins was at a, a cookout uh, at this residence. She's starting to get into her vehicle to leave. He then shoots her at that location. She later dies about an hour after this shooting at, at a local hospital. We then have him traveling into the city of Bradenton over the Green Bridge. And at roughly 10.04 p.m., he travels to a location in the city of Bradenton, the 4800 block of 51st Street East. This is a, a, a residence where another ex-girlfriend lives and her now new uh, partner. He does not shoot or kill the girlfriend, but he shoots and kills the new partner. So at this point, we now have three homicide scenes and also an ag assault scene at Palmetto Trace. Investigators are constantly getting information. We know right away that the suspect is Javante Bryce. The family has been very cooperative. They tell us exactly what's going on. We find out that he possibly has another ex-girlfriend in the state of Georgia and that he is now traveling to that state to kill her. We put out a statewide bolo. Luckily, uh, sheriff deputies with the Hamilton, Hamilton County Sheriff's Office spots the vehicle that Mr. Bryce is driving. Uh, they stop him. He immediately gets out of the car and starts firing upon them. They return fire, shooting and killing him there in Hamilton County. 
and that's where everything ends. I can't really go into all the details. I have talked to uh, uh, Sheriff Reed out of Hamilton County to make sure that those deputies are okay. They are, they're fine. Uh, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement will be investigating that deputy involved shooting there in Hamilton County. Uh, but that's what we know right now. We don't know a motive, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know what set uh, this man off. We don't know why he chose to, to kill his, his loved ones. Um, and we may never know, but we're going to continue to investigate. It's a very fluid and active investigation, and we're trying to get all the answers um, to the questions that we all have. Uh, so that's where we're at right now, um, and I'll, I'll take any questions that you that you may have. Sheriff, you spoke with some witnesses at the motel. They said that it took, they estimated 20, 30 minutes for officials and police and the EMTs to get there. Uh, do you have an estimate of how long uh, it actually took and why that was if it did take so long? No, I don't, I don't believe that's correct. We'll give you uh, the... the the, the arrival time of all the uh, personnel involved. You know, the deputies were, uh, you know, dispatched, and I don't, I don't know exactly when we got the call, about 9-17, but we'll get those, mm -hmm. those times to you. Sheriff, sure. when you talk about his past state, just going through some court records, it looks like he had some run-in with some mental health and even some injunctions just out of concern. Yeah, I mean, I know that, uh, you know, just based upon what we can um, – read into now you know he had some some BOP warrants uh, he had a, a, a burglary with an assault he had some uh, a domestic violence case uh, with strangulation uh, as far as his mental uh, state of being I'm not really sure what uh, what kind of issues he may have dealt with in the past we'll still be you know investigating all of that can we talk about the last few days? Maybe what have you learned about where his whereabouts, what he's been doing just in the last few days? Yeah, we, we haven't really had time to, to find all that information out. I understand that uh, really the people that are, are close to him that can give us that information are devastated right now. They're dealing with, uh, uh, you know, a mother of uh, several children that is now deceased, a cousin. So they're going through a lot right now, and, you know, hopefully – um, we're able to kind of, you know, in, uh, interview them and get some more information on what he may have uh, been going through the last few days prior to this tragic event. Sheriff, you said the sister was able to talk about of shooting the mother of his child at the first location. Can you give us any more detail about how that went yeah, he, he, I mean, he just went in there to kill her. For what, for what reason, we don't know. He asked if uh, he could take a shower. Uh, she declined. She said no. Um, but I don't know how she was able to talk him down. She seems to be the only one, um, you know, at this point that was able to do that. And what kind of weapon did he have, and do we know where he got it? Yeah, it was a handgun. We don't know where he got it. Uh, I, it was a, um, a revolver, um, I think a 38 or something close to that. So and that's, uh, we're assuming that's what he used to to fire on the Hamilton County deputies as well. And did they, um, I mean, I, I, did, did he fire back and none of them got struck? No, they're, they're fine. He, he, he initiated the fire. He, he, came out, he came out of the car shooting at those deputies. And, and Tim, you know, I can't get into everything because it's still being investigated by FDL, at least you know how that goes. But they, they returned fire, from my understanding, after he fired on them. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be releasing everything uh, as soon as we can. Can you talk about, too, just looking at his Facebook page? It seemed like on his Facebook page he was kind of detailing what he was going to do. There were so many people were trying to reach out to him. How important will that be in the investigation? It will be very important to, to maybe get uh, um, some more information on what, you know, what he was thinking at the time, why he was acting uh, in this manner, and, you know, really what uh, he, he seemed to have an agenda. He knew exactly who he wanted to kill, and uh, you know, he did not have a hard time locating them. What sort of roadway that the Hamilton County deputy encountered him on? Was it highway or? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Not really sure. Do we have an idea of the time difference between each shooting and how deputies could have responded you know, b between each one? Well, I can, you know, I can tell you that we, we, the, the first call in relation to the homicide at the Motel 6 came in at 917. 
right? So that's East Manatee County. That's by the interstate. We then got a uh, call of the shooting in the city of Palmetto at 9.40 p.m., and then we got a call of the shooting in the city of Bradenton at 10.04 p.m. Yeah, I don't know how anyone, quite honestly, at that hotel could have any accurate information. Inside that room is his mother, his two sisters, and the mother's boyfriend. So none of the children um, that belonged to him were in that room. How many children does he have? We believe 12. That's the number we have right now. He did have a female with her. She's uh, being interviewed at this time, and she'll be interviewed by our investigators as well. We don't know um, her relation to him at this point, but uh, she was in the car with him when the shootout took place in Hamilton County. How crucial was it to get to him before he made it to Georgia? I mean, not only to prevent any more killings, but how would that have complicated the process for you guys if he did make it across state lines? Well, I mean, the, I think that the, the main focus for us is to save a life. If he would have ended up being arrested in Georgia, that's just, you know, procedure. That would, that would not have been an issue for us. Eventually, we, we would have gotten him back to Manatee County. The main thing is, is we were able to save that, that ex-girlfriend from being shot and killed. And I really want to praise those uh, deputies from Hamilton County uh, and Sheriff Reed for uh, just really being on the lookout for this for this suspect and, and, and taking care of business. In the midst of the three, though, when did you learn that it was the same person? In the midst of the three incidents? As, as, we, as we go to each individual scene, as, as people, you know, investigators and, and officers get to the scene. So each scene, uh, there were witnesses that gave us the name Javante Bryce. So I'm just trying to make sure, like, there was nothing else that could have been done between either of them to get to him before the next. No, we didn't know where he was at. Okay. Did you know specifically where in Georgia he was headed? I, I, I really don't know. Did we know anything about his past? Like, where did he work? Did he? No. no. no it's still very fluid, y'all. I mean, we're, we're working on, you know, these, these detectives have been up all night. We've got three different you know, crime scenes that we're processing. Luckily, we have the Homicide Task Force. City of Bradenton is working with us, City of Palmetto. So, you know, this is, uh, this is gonna take a while because each scene um, has got to be processed. Uh, you know, we gotta be meticulous here. All right, that was the Manatee County, Florida Sheriff who is providing an update after we know that three women were killed in a triple shooting there in Manatee County, which is outside of the Tampa St. Petersburg area. That includes the mother and cousin of the man who deputies believe pulled the trigger. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office reporting the suspect in that homicide is also dead after firing at deputies in North Florida. So a lot to this case. We'll make sure to follow it and bring you updates as we do get them. Do want to head to our final two minute commercial break of the hour now at 1055 on the East Coast and 755 on the West Coast. You're watching live now from Fox. We'll be right back. 